Hello everyone, and welcome to the Deeply Renegade podcast. My name is Molly, also known as the Deeply Renegade, and I'm, I remember, like, welcome to episode 421. (laughs) It is um, Saturday, July 30th, 2022, and I'm glad you could join me today. It is um, probably later than usual. Um, I ended up, or it was the case where um, this weekend is um, the uh, Camp Spin 15 in 22 uh, Spinners in Wonderland. Um, So this is an all online event and it goes from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. with various sorts of um, whatever, various events through the day. So this was my uh, amusing hat to wear to the tea party and I broke out my my fancy my fancy del tea cup um and would be did a lot of spinning knitting today which was very nice as well as like keeping the baby reasonably happy <laughs> um so I traded off a little bit throughout the day um but one of the things we um one of the things that we ended up doing was we had like a show and tell of how we decorated our bags so this is what I ended up doing. Obviously, I needed to make it more blue. Um, And lots of people opted for pink bunny ears, even though it is the white rabbit. So just depended on how much of a traditionalist you were. So this will, this bag will likely end up in, uh, this bag will likely end up uh, in the stash that is used for groceries, but I thought it was I thought it turned out to be a pretty cool, cool effect. So, and then I didn't end up using the hashtag, but that'll be the end of the world. So, so there was a lot of fiber fun to be had today on top of all of the fiber fun that I've had last week. So this may be a long episode, but I'm also hungry. So. It is, um, it is now, uh, going to be too late for coffee, so just pounding the water and calling it good, but would it be such is life. So, um, would it be? So today, today was a mixture of knitting and spinning. It was actually pretty well-timed because I was actually able to wrap something up, which was lovely, um. And then I think it's just a little bit interesting because, um, like you come back from a knitting retreat and then you're, you're, um, you're like creative energy has been refilled. You have a lot of ideas that you want to go do. And then you also end up like casting out a lot of projects in anticipation of having the right project for the moment. Though I do feel a little bit like I had a situation. So there is this time when we decided to go backpacking on spur of the moment Labor Day weekend. Um, and we decided to drive to Colorado, um, pick up a friend, backpack into the wilderness, camp, camp two nights, and then I hike out and then drive all the way back to Texas again. Um, and one of the things that ended up happening was like, we just packed all the food in and we walked up and over to our, our, whatever, to the lake that we were going to with this thing of summer sausage and up and over back. And it still had that same stupid piece of summer sausage. And so we had concluded that this must be the most delicious summer sausage in the land because it traveled so much elevation and distance. And I feel that way about my Shahrazade (laughs) because I, not like it's that big, it's a cobweb project. It takes approximately zero space, but I brought it all the way to Nashville for the retreat, had it with me pretty much the whole time, and then brought it back to me, back to San Francisco, and nothing, nothing has changed. 
Well, maybe a small thing has changed. May maybe I finished knitting a row or something. Um, but it was the case where I was able to like sit down and figure out um, or get the bead calculation better. I'm not 100% sure I've actually gotten it right, but whatever. Um, but instead I ended, like I ended up doing other things besides that. And to be fair, I knew as uh, the spiciest project in, in my repertoire that um, the odds were, were not in its favor um, for it getting a lot of love and attention, but nevertheless. So, so it turned out to be uh, the most delicious summer sausage of a project. <laughs> It went all all that distance and didn't touch it at all. Um, but whatever, such is life. There there are times when it's more worth it. There are times when it's otherwise. Like it's definitely on the mind because this the brioche project that I'm working on ends up being like a a very similar sort of concept. So um, it'll be it's sort of interesting to see how this ends up coming up on the screen. So, so just be the case where like, I definitely like the thing and, and enjoying working on it. It's just, um, I need to, I need to fix my, I need to fix my bead shortage. And I made some progress on, on the calculation for, for the bead shortage. So hopefully it won't be too, too much longer before I, I'm ready to order some more beads. Um, it definitely doesn't seem like um, I'm going to end up counting any of its yardage for stash dash this year. Um, and I don't, and I'm definitely not the sort that would just leave it unfinished for that long either. Um, so, so it, it's probably, it was, uh, despite starting well before stash dash, it's, not going to be it's not going to be done before then and that is fine um, but i'm actually ripping back this row because i got to the end of the row and realized that something wasn't quite right and of course i missed missed the pattern that i intended to do last night so i am um, going to be making that right again so this is a brio shawl of my own design. I'm making this a more ferose, ferose shape. Um, so I have crescent shaping, but I also have sort of a triangle peak to it as well. Um, and so it's, or would it be, it'd be the case where I just am down for having a shawl that ends up being a, uh, very long instead of deep and this can achieve achieve that sort of thing because i don't know i i like i like crescent shapes also because i really like it when the ends get all curly <laughs> um so um both of these yarns i believe are sort of on the light fingering end they're both hand spun um, so I think I had about a thousand yards of my hip strings merino silk from the base 10 spin along. And then I had about 650 yards of this 50-50 um, alpaca silk that I ended up, this 50-50 alpaca silk that I ended up, um, Would it be this was a part of a spin along for a completely twisted and arbitrary at some point. So, all right, back on track. That's promising. Um, and what it boils down to is I'm sort of taking some of the Shahrazade um, elements and incorporating them into this shawl. So I have sort of that that sort of beaded dewy look at least so far on the project. I don't know where would it be. I'm guessing what's gonna end up happening is I'm going to start, um, like when, when I feel like it, 
I'll, I'll start sort of morphing the pattern to do, or morphing the pattern to transition into maybe a slightly different pattern, because right now it's sort of the case where I'm doing this row right now that has um, these increases in it, but then eventually I end up uh, decreasing them all away. So it it makes it so that there's these little, um, these little, whatever, I'm trying to think of the right word for it. I have these little droplet shapes in the pattern, um, but I'm not shifting the stitch count with them, if that makes any sense. Um, so, so far, so far so good, but definitely maybe fighting, uh, whatever, be being tired. <laughs> um, when, when going, going to a, a big, a, a knitting retreat as an introvert, you're like torn um, between having uh, filling up as much of your time as possible with with your people, and then being like, even even these people who share so much in common with me um, can can be a little much. <laughs> so it definitely it was definitely the case where, um, but um, because. I needed to frequently take breaks in order to pump. Um, I did end up getting a little bit more alone time this year because I was debating if I just wanted to like throw a cover on and stay in the flow of things. Um, but it just turned out to be a lot easier to be like, okay, I am going to leave all of that stuff in my room. Um, they have upgraded the rooms or the, the rooms have become upgraded from previous years. So there is now a microwave and a a sizable mini fridge. So this is not the sort of mini fridge that has like a little envelope for a freezer. Um, this is the sort of mini fridge that has a whole separate door um, for for the freezer, and that was very convenient because um, I basically fill that whole little mini fridge freezer over the course of the week. Um, so it was the case where I had some time to be away from people where I said, like, okay, I need to do this anyways and have a little bit of quiet introvert recovery time. So that tended to be a good time to call my spouse and catch up and that sort of thing. So that was good. Um, but yeah, no, it's, would it be definitely, definitely feeling, would it be the case where you go into it as like work was stressful before, then you have whatever the the challenge of being an introvert around uh, lots and lots of people, and then work was crazy again. So I haven't even I haven't made a post to sort of sum up the SSK experience for Instagram, though I would like to. Um, at some point, it will get buried pretty deep in the photos. So, but there were some times where it was. Uh, a little a little too spicy for this project even when brioche is is comfort knitting <laughs> um so just the fact that i have like this little bit of pattern here is like oh yeah maybe maybe that isn't the best choice um but it was it would be it was the case where um ended up actually learning a lot more about like what went into the fiber for this, so specifically specifically the, the hip strings fiber. So um, it was it was very instructive and in sort of breaking down like, okay, why why would you include this when you're spinning? What what are you what are you trying to do? That sort of thing. And then one of the other projects that I'm going to talk about um, was also from a class as well. So, so it's sort of the case where there was like pretty good, pretty good integration um, between what what I'm going to show as uh, finished things or works in progress and, oops, yeah, catch these air really. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so so it'd be the case where I think there is pretty good integration here in the podcast with um, things that things that I've completed with um, things that I've completed or working on and and what and how they sort of relate to what's uh, buzzing in my mind right now. So this was, oh wow, <laughs> this is like a smidge too spicy for this at the present moment, I think. Um, it'll be okay. I was like, I made, made the same mistake twice, but luckily, recently enough, it's not too bad to, to make it right again. So yeah, so that was... That was good, but also would it be just, I just understand that that's where my, my brain space is. (laughs) So I'm like simultaneously full of ideas, but also being like, (laughs) oh, and like there's definitely like pretty good explanations of why so like one thing is i'm feeling sort of tired today because um dpn has been sleeping through the night but he decided tonight was not that night (laughs) um so but it's also just been a long week so here is where we're at um and that marker is actually where i'd left off so i didn't get a ton but you can sort of see here sort of that interlocking bead yeah i think bead is probably the the best way to describe the pattern itself so i'm i'm out of um sort of that molly blue section i'm now in a section where the yarn is sort of a pale teal and gray. And then on the back side, um, because there aren't necessarily bigger stretches, it doesn't it doesn't look um, as intentional on, on the back side here, but still still gorgeous, but would it be it be the case where there are just occasional places where you have like um or it would look like if I transition to making slightly bigger increases for my little beads, you'd be able to see it better on this side. But in this case, it's just like you have like occasional bars popping up in between sort of the, the brioche lines on the wrong side. So it's definitely a sided, like this pattern is definitely, there. there's a right side and a wrong side for sure. But so far so good. It's not super duper big at this point. I may end up needing like for now I think I'll leave it on the size needle but as it starts to grow I'll have to transition but since it is two color brioche it's sort of convenient to have it on um, the smallest needle that'll work because then you don't when you switch colors you don't need to slide as much if you have it on a really big needle it can get annoying but we can we can show Shahrazade briefly She's still beautiful. She's still properly on the needles, so sometimes you just have to verify. So, um, getting really, really close to the point where I will be starting the border anyways, and the light appears to be really nice today, so there's that. (sighs) Just need to finish figuring so let's see what else do we have there we go so the other thing on the needles which actually has made oops quite a bit of progress um this was a a, this was definitely a, a pretty good speed for for fiber for knitting and spinning retreat is the 1898 hat Oops, get that get all sorted. So I am almost done with the band for this one. 
Um, and maybe it will be the case where, so this got actually a decent amount of plain knitting on it. Um, so I am holding um, fiber optic um, cashmere, which is a merino cashmere silk blend, um, light fingering. Um, so I'm holding two strands red, one strand black right now. And then when I finish the band, I'll hold two strands black, one strand red. Because I think that maximizes my yarn. Um, and then um, after I finish decreasing the ear flap and knitting the little little bit past that, I will be using my long tail to seam it together like so eventually to when it'll look like this. And then I'll pick up the stitches and start knitting the hat up from there. Um, and so maybe the only thing that I'll need to let me so we're like really close to being done with the band at this point. So if we get it all lined up, like I just have a little bit more knitting to go. Um, and then before I think I seam it up, I'll try it on my spouse and make sure he likes it. Make sure it makes sense because then otherwise I'll, I may need to rip, I may need to rip back this ear flap that I'm on and maybe do a couple more rows. Because it did seem like it wasn't turning out as big as I had hoped for. So I was, it would definitely have been too small if I had been following the pattern, but I just sat down, figured out the logic of the pattern, and also compared it to his measurements, and like, oh, your ears are located in the same spot the pattern is saying proportionally. So I tried to be proportional without scaling the pattern. But like, it's really close. Like, it is not going to be too much longer before this part's done. Um, and hopefully I don't run out of yarn. Um, <laughs> so it definitely, it definitely does, like, this is pretty chaotic looking right now, but, um, like, I'll probably weigh the yarn and check and make sure everything seems to be coming out okay. Um, it was the case where I was, um, I think I was afraid, oh, maybe, maybe I swapped which colors I was supposed to hold in what places, and hopefully I haven't uh, gotten myself in trouble with that one. I think most of the yardage in the hat's actually in this part of it, because um, it's double thick and garter and very stretchy. You shall see. Um, but the hope is, um, what it be? this is, Holding yarn tripled is a great way to, to win at the stash dash, so there's that. So hopefully it's not too, too much longer, but I think that also just depends on how I'm feeling. What's going on? So in exciting news, I do have two finished cowls. So I'll talk about the first one and then the second one we can maybe get a little bit more into the SSK content. So what I have here is the Hillary cowl, which is um, a bigger than life knits pattern that I was knitting as a shop sample for the Black Square Berkeley. It, I'm knitting it out. I knitted it out of Plymouth Yarns Viento, which is 70% baby alpaca, 30% bamboo. Um, so really, really super, super light and airy yarn um, and very, very kitteny soft. So um, this still this still needs to be blocked, but when it is blocked, um, you'll be able to see the texture a little bit better. But even even the, the wrong side still looks pretty cool. <laughs> um, so I don't know if maybe I had like a little bit of funniness with the gauge, but like the designer, let me verify, make sure I'm saying, oh, I even closed it. So um, it is um, Noma Nijobo, Nijoda. 
<laughs> um, so she actually is like wearing it like on her shoulders. I'm actually looking at what's going on there. So she she is actually able to sort of wear it on her shoulders as a capelet, but the way I think everything worked out here, this is much better as like a long loop cowl or even or even like doubled up like so so festive and then you can also like i think you can also i think after you do that then you can like get it get it onto the shoulders from there so like i thought my gauge was good um i do have a little bit more or a little bit less than half this game this left over these were 50 gram 98 yard skeins so i have 20 grams left over um but it didn't seem like i could get one more repeat i didn't seem like i could get one more repeat of the, the button stitch in so i'm like yeah I'll just finish it call it good um so very soft very fluffy i did russian joins to join my balls so um and all it's just a block it's just a block away from being done so i'll i'll take some fo pictures um i don't even know if i have that many in in the grand scheme of things but it's definitely um very good as a long loop or or as a double loop i think i think i would i don't think i can yeah triple loop maybe maybe too bold <laughs> Triple loop may be a little bit too much, but should be good. So I'll, I'll have to double check my my gauge and see if it was way, way off. I didn't think it was. Um, but overall, definitely my speed of, of knitting project for the retreat definitely got some good work done on this. I don't even remember. I don't even remember where I was when when I finished it, it was definitely, I definitely finished it at the retreat. Now, what ended up getting most of my retreat knitting was actually this. So this is um, a bandana cowl that I ended up designing as a part of um, Frenchie um, Denoy's class. So Frenchie is a Roja Knits. And um, I finished this all up today because I did my my nice my nice big um, I cord bind off. So this I can or would it be this I can totally sorry like pull, pulling the wrong spot. So this I can totally wear like this is at the place where it's like somewhere between a cowl and a poncho. <laughs> Because there, there's quite a lot. There's quite a lot of this. So, with Frenchie's class, um, she, we spent like two and a half hours in the class just watching, and so we ended up doing um, sort of four different ways of manipulating, manipulating your project in order to create an effect. Um, and then after the swatch was completed. Um, then went in and, and cast on uh, the bandana cowl and this ended up turning out pretty big because it was like oh yeah like use this yarn use that yarn and um and this is where we ended up <laughs> so now now we have something that is quite quite a bit bigger um than maybe a straight up cowl would be but whatever and you can definitely like you can definitely use this how however however you wish um just depends on what you're trying to go for here um but i started off with um some i cord um which was not necessarily in her um formula for the the shawl or for the bandana cowl and then i finished off with an i cord bind off um and um so i did the normal sort of thing for like the i cord but when I did the bind off, I actually did, um, I actually did like a skip in it. So, so it actually holds open 
and you can stretch the brioche the full amount. So for every stitch I bound off, I had to knit eight because <laughs> it's a four stitch I cord. <laughs> but I, I am very pleased with how it turned out. And whenever I ran out of yarn, I finished off the row or tinked back and then incorporated the new color. And then I swapped, I swapped color, like I swapped my, my white versus my colored hand spun, depending on the situation. Because it was the case where Laura had sent the notes for the class and was like, oh, we need like fingering yarn and DK yarn and or it be. So it was the case where I was like, oh, I need to gather a variety of yarns in order to make this. And then I was like, crap, like I'm really busy. <laughs> so I went into my hand spun samples and just pulled a bunch of things that I thought would be coordinating. Um, and so what I have here is um, a sample from a spinning class with um, Judith McKenzie. Um, the this one ended up being some yarn that um, was chain ply leftovers from my um, color music socks. Um, this was a sample that I got with three, or this is a sample that I got with Into the World, their um, Aurora Borealis colorway. I think this is some BFL from a spinning class. This is some BFLs from a spinning class. I have blue core spun, and then I have some more BFL. And then this one, these last one that I ended up doing were like two different bats that I had. And then the white is a mixture of, of various samples because sometimes you just get white fiber in class and you're just you're spinning away on it. So most of the white is leftovers from my um, Shetland that I got when I initially got card or when I initially got combs. And then any other white yarn I had lying around because at some point I ran out of the initial skein. So um, the bigger than life knits cowl, the Hillary cowl was about 248 grams. This one was 238 um, and definitely ended up making some, some pretty substantial fabric. So I just sort of counted this for my stash dash as just DK. I was like, eh, just roughly DK. There's definitely places where it's fingering held doubled and that sort of thing, but yeah. And then it looks it looks very different on the other side. So this one, I think this is how I'm going to intend to wear it. So I have this sort of blue blue streak at the end and you can really see how gorgeous because this is like cable. Um, but then we swap it. Um, and you end up getting sort of a very different look. So some of my I ended up putting some of the warmer tone ones. Um, to be this way so you can sort of see here like how much how much different it looks um because the more blue ones are sort of in the background instead of the foreground here so it should be good i'm sort of liking it i'm liking wearing this sort of with the point down here but you can you can uh totally totally make it work just sort of as that nice easy uh a nice easy way of uh making this go so the blue is definitely definitely distinctive and obvious on on this side too so would it be both both sides totally work um and it was definitely the case where i had no plans for this at all so it's really cool to get like this really big shawl cowl poncho thing because you know i've been talking forever about <laughs> Want, wanting to knit some sort of brioche poncho thing. So effectively, I did it. <laughs> um, yeah, and what a piece. So a really, really fun, easy piece. I didn't do anything too, too fancy. Um, so I just sort of used the correct uh, increase rate to make a brioche triangle and, and went to town there. So, so it was, it was a lot of fun and really fast and I finished it today. So I finished the bind off. I wove in all the ends, like, what it be? I stopped, I stopped increasing after I joined it in the round. Um, 
So yeah, like pretty pretty big object in the grand scheme of things. And totally, totally a surprise. But like just a lot of fun to to work up these samples. So I still basically have a full Ziploc bag of, of samples left over. I don't know if I'll end up trying to do a similar thing again. But it was the class was just very much so about playtime and giving yourself the permission to just be creative and try and find out and figure out what what sort of vision you wanted to create with the things you had gathered together. So um and that would do, like that's sort of the speed of where I am with my knitting right now is when I take a knitting class it tends to be like how do you design something? <laughs> Um, how how do you uh, get out of your head and and be creative and fun? So it was very fun to be like, how do I how do I integrate this? How do I make this good? So it was the case for sort of working out like, what colors do I want? Do I want high contrast versus low contrast? And sort of moving along and selecting what what spoke to me. But uh, I do do really like how this worked out so that was good fun um and also got to use some of my first course fun yarns so I was like oh man maybe I should be doing course fun so that's sort of what the the feedback loop of what was going on it was like this was stuff I already had stuff I'd already done before but um gave it new new life and energy new new things to be excited about um so the other class I ended up taking, um, I ended up taking two spinning classes. Um, I took one with Jillian Moreno and one with Jill Duarte. And so this is some of the stuff that I ended up creating in the um, Jillian Moreno class. So it was, it was called Mix It Up. And it was about um, approaching braids and spinning them in different ways than whatever thinking about like singles two ply three ply chain ply so so those are all perfectly valid normal things um but it was sort of about playing with color and um would it be like a couple of like a couple of different things going on with like okay like what about combo drafting what about adding a solid color what happens when you draft together? What sort of result do you get? What sort of thing do you have when you have one ply braid, one ply solid? And so it was very much so just, um, it's very similar to the Frenchie class where it's just like, okay, get out of your head, play around, see what happens. Um, and then um, like try to figure out like what you wanna do. So I, I picked up it was the case where she ended up laying out this um, this um, merino tensile blend in pink, orange, and swamp green, and I ended up um, spinning. It ended up being, I think, about like half an ounce of that, and then I ended up drafting it together with some blue merino silk, and then there was way less of the merino silk. So, like, it was, like, this yarn turned out really, really fun, um, despite the fact that, whatever, most of the colors behind it are not my colors, but I added my color to, I made a choice to, to do an addition. And then the same blue merino silk I incorporated into these ones, these ones as well. So, so it was just the case where, um, we ended up making a bunch of different samples in the class, so I definitely have another card like this. I probably should label label better, but so it was the case where we just had all these different ways of handling the color, and so then on one side of it, I have my singles. On the other side, I have the flight yarn. And then I think what was a lot of that was very festive was um, sort of we ended up taking like little minis and um, what ended up happening when you drafted 
when you drafted them together. Um, and so all of this has sort of that same base fiber, um, but I ended up drafting it with, with other different things. And so all of these coordinate, they all look really gorgeous together. Um, but it was just very fun to be like, what, what happens when you add pink? What happens when you add dark blue? What happens when you whatever? So it was definitely a situation of, or definitely the case where you're like, well, let's see, let's see what happens. Let's see what we can do. And it basically convinced me that, um, I need more black fiber because I want to shift I want to shift things darker um, and I just don't have it don't have it available so all of this I ended up counting as um, some of my stash dash heritage here so I ended up getting whatever so I had a 36 meter mini a 37 meter mini and a 180 meter mini um, so it just just funny to see how all of that ends up adding up. And I still have a lot of fiber left over from the class, so I could go back and have a lot of fun. So the Jill Duarte class that I ended up taking, and she is um, behind hip strings, is um, basically it was like a fiber speed dating class so she gave us 12 she had 12 half ounce samples of various blends that um various blends that she ended up selling and then also a little bit of this orange merino <laughs> um and so she would hand us the package of fiber we'd start spinning it we write down our impressions and then we would start discussing what was actually in it and as we got later in the class, we just started like guessing. <laughs> um, and so, so it was a case where I got to try a lot of different blends of fiber, but then also we had a lot of discussions about why you would put this with that. What would happen if you had too much? What would happen? Where would it be? Um, why would you do one type of silk versus another type of silk? whatever so we ended up being like three different types of silk um several different breeds of wool um flax alpaca um i think it was alpaca i think alpaca was one of the things in there um but tulsa, tulsa mulberry and and sari silk um super fine merino merino um Shetland I think there was some Corydale in there at some point so as someone who's making fiber blends on that drum card it was super instructive to be like ah we didn't talk a lot about the color aspect of it though I know that she could probably go for a long time about that too and then it was also funny because at some point when we were doing um like the spinning trials and like all right like here is the blend that I made. Guess what's inside of it? Because I felt like <laughs> turnabout was fair play. <laughs> it was like she made me guess what was in her fiber, so I made her guess what was in mine. So what if you she didn't she didn't get it right? <laughs> Which made me feel better. But I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> so it, but it was interesting because she ended up having some she identified a lot of interesting things about what I had put together. So I am not yet done figuring out what I'm doing with this at this point. Um, like I have lots, lots of the fiber left over. So I, I brought Ziploc bags for the purpose of, uh, uh, keeping milk contained and then decided to use it to keep all of the yarn and fiber contained. So I have all of my, all of my leftovers in here and I had to like squish the air out and then squish the air out of this. Um, but I have the key. I have all the little baggies. So I'll probably what's probably going to end up happening is I need to finish spinning all the samples 
and then so finish spinning the samples make like little two plies of them and then they'll end up going in my sample bag and I'll have 250 grams of fiber <laughs> back <laughs> back in my sample collection but whatever we'll we'll get it worked out eventually so yeah so all sorts of fiber in here and then I also have uh, the extra fiber and things to play around with from Jillian's class as well so but I just applied a couple of them to get the bobbin free and because I'm working on a sweater spin <laughs> um so I did get some of the sweater spin done but I still have quite a lot Okay, so I ended up bringing eight ounces of the project with me, and I s still have quite a lot to spend, so. <laughs> um, but basically what it boils down to is I'm going to have five four-ounce bobbins, and then I'll apply them all together and call it good. But, and I got like a little squish. Some of the air has been taken out of it, but I'm not too concerned. Um, so I finished what I had been working on in SSK today during the spin 15 or camp spin 15 and 22 and then started on the next one. So I, I have um, 16 different pieces that I'm just sort of mixing up randomly. Um, and this one I'm just sort of pulling out of the bag. I'll probably mix up the bags a little bit better for subsequent plies, but like I have most of the bobbin so I don't think it's too much more to go before I have that good to go um so did did make some good progress on that um when I wasn't working it was the case where I had my spinning classes on Thursday the first full day then my knitting class was on the Friday and so it was sort of cool to finish a cowl in a week <laughs> a little bit more than that pretty close so that's going along. Will I be able to finish before the end of the month? So I get to count all that yardage for stash dash. We'll see. <laughs> um, like, who knows? Um, what would it be? So that's cruising along. So that is a combination of BFL, um, so undyed um, um, oatmeal BFL, um, my hand dyed fin, Hello yarn, 70s merino, a little bit of mohair, a little bit of merino silk, um, blended together on layers on my drum carter, and then sort of mixed up combo spin styles so that I can have long color runs and that sort of thing with the yarn. So that's that's coming along nicely. Hoping like I did a little sample to see what it would look like as five ply and I was like, yeah, no, that's a good that's a good thickness. That's a that's a cool look. So I'm still on board with that plan. Um and I'm thinking now I probably need to stop the video briefly, um help out a very annoyed bambino. <laughs> Um, and then I can talk a little bit about um, what what fun things have entered my life. Because <laughs> um, what would it be? Like, that's, that's the whole thing. What would it be? Um, there's always, you know, like that expectation and thought like, oh, I don't need anything. It's fine. And then you go into like a market situation and I spend the usual number of dollars. <laughs> Um, ODP and I also ended up getting some fun door prizes as well. So, but I think, I think we'll, we'll do a quick cut, um, and then get, get back to that. So whatever, hopefully I'm back while there's still sunshine. <laughs> Okie dokie. This did give me an opportunity to, uh, 
take everything and relocate it so that it was uh, in better reach. But what would it be? So, um, what would it be? <laughs> so, ended up, uh, like having a uh, pretty, pretty good mix of various things that ended up coming together. I have that a little bit. So. The baby disagrees. <laughs> <laughs> but like, so this was uh, the logo this year. So all of our stuff had some, some orange on it. It was apparently uh, the last color. Um, and so what it boils down to is that if you've seen the Nashville skyline, there is uh, the AT&T building looks like Batman. <laughs> um, so not too, not too crazy there. So nice sturdy bag as part of the dirty bag. We had um, um, a rope bowl from Starnets included in this. So good, like, I don't know. This is definitely my speed, something that fits nicely into my life. We had um, a little fan that was included with it. And then we ended up, ha I ended up going for the yarn and the fiber. So, and both of those were from the Spotted Circus. So this is a super fine sock over speckle, an 8515 super fine merino nylon blend. And so this is, um, colorway is rainbow raindrops which is very, very lovely and cool. And then the fiber, and I suppose you probably might know if it's out of the bag, so probably not start there, is actually um, steampunk. So this is a fractal pack. It is um, South American wool, 80% South American wool and 20% viscose tweed, which is something we learned in the fiber bone class is actually pretty nice to spin. Um, and so it will be interesting to see, um, would it be, it'll be interesting to sort of lay it out and see how everything comes together with this one, but definitely not my color. So, but that's, that's part of the fun, right? Is you, you don't know, you don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of. What else was included? We also had a, we ended up getting a three patterns from Nella Brigo and um, some coupons and stickers and fun stuff like that. So another thing which I think will be fun to throw on the keychain is we ended up getting these needle, these needle gauges from Tangerine Designs. So, and in the shape of the, the old school hotel key. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun to figure out the right place to put my sticker and have some yarn. And then, what would it be? So, I ended up getting the Mucha Midibs, the Go To Hat, and um, the Sense of Direction Cowl. So, should be good. And we were encouraged to trade and figure out what was going on, but I was a little bit too scatterbrained for, for that to see if I wanted patterns that other people had. So, so that was the good bag that I'm actually going to be sending my fan to a friend. Um, I just need to select, select the appropriate box and, and get that to her because whatever. I'm not in a stage in my life where I need the neck fan. <laughs> Maybe I'll see if there's any, if there's other things I can throw into that package too. Figure it out. Um, or if, like, probably not fiber, but I may throw some hand spun in. <laughs> just just depends um so that was what everyone got i also ended up getting a t-shirt i was thinking of wearing it today and then didn't so 
whatever. We'll we'll get it worn eventually. Um so I ended up winning a couple of door prizes. Um part of this has to do with um my own uh maximization strategy. Um <laughs> And I, I feel like or would it be everything that I ended up winning was a little bit blue. So so there is that. So this is um Un Besito Fiber. So she was supposed to come. Um she was supposed to come or would it be in the twenty twenty SSK but wasn't wasn't able to do the twenty twenty two. Um so this is a um non superwash merino nylon base and I don't know where the card like there was a card on this um but def definitely definitely molly colors <laughs> I made sure to put lots of tickets in anything that was blue and then the other thing that I got on the first on the opening night door prize was actually this fiber um so also so this one is um like blue, yellow, green, and gray with some natural. So this was dyed by Victorian Sharon, who is um, Grandma Vicky, and she is um, from Vermont. And so this is four ounces of Falkland in the Field of Daisies colorway. So, should be good. Okay, now it's the case of the very gently of putting things where they belong. So, um, on um, closing night, I ended up also getting two door prizes as well. So I got um, this indigo dyed foster sheep's farm stain. So this is Claire's Cory dyed with indigo, and it is 72% Cory Dale, 28% Wensley Dale. Sorry, it didn't register in my mind that they could be Cory Dale and Wensley Dale. And so this is 100 grams of. Um, DK weight yarn, 250 yards. So, should be fun. Um, would it be having, I don't know, Wednesday day? <laughs> um, I put in, I put in tickets for, for all of the foster sheep farm ones. Um, but this is, I got the bluest one. So, kiss my. <laughs> and then the other thing I ended up winning was um these stitch markers from Velvet Hippo and um Gwen made sure when she handed them to me that they were the blue ones. <laughs> so so that was fun. So these are um what are these? So the, these are very nice jump rings um jump jump ring stitch markers are the kind where the, the bead is placed strategically to close the ring. Um I'm only sometimes nice enough to myself when I make those. So these will be uh, very useful and um, should be good. So I need to still like whatever, take pictures and probably thank everyone who sent who sent door prizes and all of that fun stuff, which is maybe why it's taken a little a little longer to um, process and think on these things. <laughs> So, um, the other, the rest of this is, um, market purchases. I didn't end up actually going to any of the local yarn stores in Nashville since I took three classes that took up a pretty large portion of my day. Um, but whatever, it was, it was fine. <laughs> I have to, maybe I have to laugh a little bit because it's sort of the case where you're like, <laughs> did I need somewhere? You don't, you don't need it. <laughs> um, so, so it's the case where I ended up between the goodie bag and the door prize, I ended up getting eight ounces of fiber there and I ended up buying a pound of fiber, so whatever. And also a little bit more, so. Um, I was, it was the case where after taking Jillian's class, I'm like, oh, I definitely need 
black fiber in my life, maybe it's the case where I just need to make it or I need to buy naturally colored black stuff. Um, but I did buy some stuff as bat food or drum carter food. So I got one ounce of blue Firestar nylon and I got half an ounce of sari silk because that was a lot of it. I read a bit. These are fun things to put in bats. Um, and I didn't really have a stash of um, cool add-ins for that for that purpose. So I figured that this will end up being really nice. Um, and if I need more, I can get more. No big deal. And I ended up picking this up from Spotted Circus. Um, but in addition to that, I ended up also getting um, a mostly black braid from Spotted Circus as well. So this is, and I'll probably end up um, drum carding this once through because I was talking with Elizabeth about it. She's like, yeah, it didn't quite integrate as well as she had hoped. And I was like, oh yeah, I can totally, can totally make that work. So this is Cory Silk Sparkles. So 60% Cory Dale. 30% Sari Silk and 10% Firestar in the Fireworks colorway. So it's mostly black because she ends up doing some really cool things with black. Um, but yeah, I'll I'll pa I'll have this in the pass through through the drum carter in order to um, get it like a little bit better blended and in, in the grand scheme of things. Um, so that, that is fun and exciting, though this doesn't necessarily count as the black fiber of my hopes and dreams. Um, it, it just looked fun. She had samples of all of her different fiber and that definitely helped sell me on the endeavor. And then I ended up getting four ounces of this lovely teal green navy. So this is from Colorway. And it is super fine merino top, 18.5 micron, four ounces, and colors. It is the uh, colors inspired by nature. So definitely was Molly colors for sure. Do I have something similar in my stuff? Probably not. Specifically a teal one. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I was sort of the case where I was like thinking about things in the context of um would it be fun stuff so I was like yes I would I would like some teal fiber in my life and then the other the other um, fiber that I ended up getting was from hip strings um, so I ended up getting this 80% targi 10% tussa 10% bamboo blend um, which is probably due to her Jill's class and I also picked up another one of her her Tessa silk blends or sorry one of these sorry silk blends so this one is silky it is 75% merino 12.5% Tessa and 12.5% um sorry so there's Tessa in there too um and so this is totally due to spinning with her stuff in the class and the base 12 spin along um so the silk in that the sorry silk in this is my colors um so it'll be very interesting to see how this comes together um and maybe in, entirely possible that these would look really gorgeous together too as well so thought thought that that was fun and festive i think this is actually sort of this one is a commercial blend and this is one of her her custom blends so I don't actually think I have this exact. <laughs> I know I definitely have to. I'm pretty sure I don't have something just like this. So I think I got like a pretty, like if we think about uh, like sort of like color representation of fiber, I have my my shade, my tint, and my tones all all well well represented here. Um, and then I ended up getting, 
sort of two different sweater quantities of yarn. Um, and I, this, this one I think will come as a surprise to longtime viewers. <laughs> I got some natural colored, or if it is, it's very lightly dyed wool. So this is from um, Camellia Fiber Company. Um, so they're actually local to Nashville. And so this is CFC Organic Linen. Um, and so it is 70% organic wool, 30% linen. And these are 437 yard skeins. And I am going to be knitting a poet with this. So. Um, I think it has like a very, it would be, it's the case where the poet, I think really does need to be knit with a light yarn. Um, and she didn't have this yarn in blue. <laughs> and like most of her stuff, like probably isn't really my color aesthetic, but, um, I kept on picking up her alpaca base and then being like, no, I cannot knit the poet in alpaca. <laughs> um, and so. I am very excited about this. I tried on Leslie's Poet in the try it on room and it, it, it had gone a little felted, not gonna lie, but oh, man, like it looks so good. <laughs> um, and so even though Leslie is not my size, I give extra bonus points to any design where you can put it on in the wrong size and it still looks fantastic. Um, so this is this is very exciting. The poet was something that I ended up putting into my queue um, for the time where I'd eventually ended up deciding to knit the um, Donner sweater instead. So if I had knit it, poet probably wasn't the wrong was the wrong pattern for the yarn. Such as like, I was very tempted by Amy's Jacob. Her, that was some, she, she had several pieces with her. Um, but Amy of Ross Farm has started to do a collaboration with various indie dyers. And so she's actually getting um, some of her own sheep or some of the yarn from her sheep um, dyed. And so this is BFL Limited. And this was dyed by Destination Yarn. And so I have Bay Lake, Lakewood, Ohio, and Natural. Um, and I ended up, I grabbed all of the BFL I could and two other skeins to keep it company. So this should, and this is sport weight. So this is, well, is that? Might be, might be a dense, it's a dense sport weight. Cause this is saying 250 yards on hundred grams. So I would normally call that DK. Oh, hey ho, whatever. Um, so this is three ply, um, non superwash BFL. But I don't know, it's just the case where, like, the colors and sort of, uh, whatever the story behind this yarn spoke to me, and I will figure out some, some fun color work to do with this, because I have my, I have my, my shade, my tint, and my tone. And, like, <laughs> like the white just glows. <laughs> so, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we, we've got some good difference there. So maybe the case where I end up making like a tea or taking one of the tea patterns that I tried on in the try it on room and going from there. So this is like vague sweater plans. Because <laughs> like technically speaking, yeah, like I, I can't have sleeves. <laughs> Um, or I don't think I have enough yarn for sleeves on this, so should be good, but definitely very excited to support any of the Ross Farm. And then the last thing that I wanted to talk about, um, so the place to be when we walked in the market was, um, Amy Bass Food, so she is the fat squirrel, and, um, she had posted the previous night a Instagram reel just showing her booth and um, it's been the case where I wanted to get one of these bags from her mother-in-law because they're fantastic and I sent her the reel and it's like 
which one would you like? And she was like, not one of them. <laughs> it was like, ah, because summer Amy's aesthetic is our aesthetic. And when I want to like give her like a Christmas gift, winter Amy's aesthetic is not our aesthetic. <laughs> So I picked out two bags that I really liked, and um, my mother-in-law will pick between the two of them. So we have this bicycle one with flowers and birds and sort of like a navy base. And then we have this one, which is um, also birds and flowers, but obviously my aesthetic as well. Um, and definitely went with uh, some of the definitely was more drawn to sort of the darker ones because like my fast flow bags uh definitely get some wear so it was it was funny um I put my bag on the table and Pat also had her identical bag on the table and hers was crisp and white and clean and pristine and my bag's been through some stuff <laughs> so it's fine I probably should Throw it through the washer or something like that, but like, my like these these bags go through a lot, and this one has two shawls in it. So, um, so I ended up getting getting the sweater size, and one of these will be living with me, and one of them will be living with her. So, one gift, but we're not sure which one it is. <laughs> um, so. If I was clever, which I was not, I would have maybe done like a little bit of the debrief there, but so it was a tremendous amount of fun being at the retreat. I was a little worried that it would be different with having everyone be in masks. Um, maybe just like thoughts ended up going through was like definitely had some moments where it's like oh my gosh I have totally forgotten <laughs> um like about someone's life or what they looked like or I would never actually met them in person before like whole whole crazy bit there um it was just like it was definitely a case where even though um or whatever like there's some time has passed <laughs> but it would be so it's the case where I definitely did not feel like I had as much social stamina um but at the same time like the retreat still filled my cup in in the way that I was expecting it to um what would it be like there were lots of newbies this year, but I still think the spirit of the retreat remained the same. So, so that, that was good. Um, would it be definitely like, cause I don't really care. Like I'm a butterfly. I move around from group to group to group. I'm not going to stick with one group for, for the whole time. And so I didn't get to meet everyone, but I tried. <laughs> um, so got to hang out with um, new friends and new friends and old friends. And so, that was great. Um, I got to do hot chicken twice. And in very, very exciting news, um, like 0.3 miles away from Scarab Bennett, a Velvet Taco is open. So Velvet Taco is like one of my favorite Dallas chains and they're beginning to go national and um, was very excited to share it with, with some friends. <laughs> um, and like, totally met expectations um and my expectations were high <laughs> so even though it was a chain I was like we need to go because I miss this tremendously and actually I was trying to describe to someone who I thought like I'd mix up the names so I was describing what you got at Velvet Taco but describing it to Torchy's Tacos and they're similar but different they have different pleasures <laughs> so it's so like that was an unexpected happiness there. Um, and then it turns out there there's a hot chicken place that's like super duper close. So it was delicious food and fast because like Hattie B's is definitely the best. Um, but you have to wait outside and there's no AC 
and yeah. <laughs> um, and then I got to have a party foul at the airport. So I didn't do Hattie Bees this time because I couldn't quite make all of these things line up, but it should be fine. Um, but I think I do have the Velvet Taco will now be the new favorite location for, for margaritas because it was good. Um, yeah, and like would it be? So it was the case where I had to sort of excuse myself like a decent amount because it'd be the case where I had to wake up a little early because like you don't, it was very lovely to not need to take care of any human beings. Um, and, but it was also the case where you're like, you do not forget that you, you are a mother. <laughs> so I had that, that reminder of, okay, my biological shot clock of pump when I wake up in the morning, go have breakfast, um, do, do my class, um, eat lunch, go pump before, before my class. <laughs> um, do, do all of that fun stuff, pump before dinner and do all that stuff and then pump before going to bed. So. Um, and that was an opportunity to sort of step away. So on one hand, it like breaks your heart a little bit, just like hang out with all the people all the time. And then being like, I'm an introvert. I need to be alone sometimes. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was, or would it be? Um, and it was the case where there was actually, um, a case of COVID that happened during the retreat. So, um, a whole house needed to quarantine and so I was really impressed with what Leslie and Laura did in order to help make sure they were still having a fun time. Um, I don't know if it was as much fun but it wasn't the case where it wasn't like a meltdown. Um, I think they handled it with with grace. Um, so would it be? But it was also maybe like a little bit bittersweet because um, whatever is the case where they were very worried about whether or not they could continue to hold the retreat in the future because like there's going to be like a three year magnitude change in price um, or whatever, or the Scarabena Center has changed and therefore, um, therefore like the prices are definitely going to go for next year and they're just trying to figure out how to make everything come together. Um, so it was def like it was it was definitely emotional in the closing ceremony to be like like will will we be able to continue on so they they did not have an auto in to ssk bag for the donations <laughs> um so it was just the case where would it be like it's not certain that it will continue but at the same time i think they did such a great job of keeping the spirit going, but keeping us safe at the same time. So it was lame to be wearing a mask, but like it was also justified too. So, <laughs> um, it would be like, I feel like they were able to, um, like we all have, like we were able to have fun, but we were also safe, if that makes sense. So, Hopefully, hopefully it continues on because I am always game for an excuse to <laughs> to do this though. It could be like it was just maybe a little bit a little bit chaotic. <laughs> Since I had planned this back in March. <laughs> I did not know then what, or whatever how chaotic everything else would be, but luckily everyone was. My coworkers were very nice about the fact that I was gone. I, and if they didn't remember, they're like, okay, whatever. <laughs> be like, I can't help you. <laughs> so, what it be? So it's just the case where I feel full and excited and good to go. Um. But then also sort of the case of like, oh, I missed, I missed a weekend to prepare for all of the nonsense going on. So, um, it's been a little bit, a little bit thin this week, just because you're like, okay, this is what, what would it be? It's filling the dream. <laughs> um, 
so hopefully hopefully it continues on um we shall see about the recording schedule um would it be like obviously this is a mega long episode um but it'll fit in one video it'll be fine um laugh at myself for totally forgetting to publish last week's video until i got back home again whoopsies <laughs> um but i don't know we'll we'll see i will i i'm not gonna i'm not gonna record next week i'll record the week after <laughs> be like my mom's gonna be in town like it would have been so much easier to do that the other way so whatever we'll see you again in two weeks so with that i hope you guys have a lovely week and i look forward to talking guys soon so take care guys Bye bye